This is a reaction in the German press to Germany legend Franz Beckenbauer dying at 78, the World Cup winner with West Germany as a player and a coach, widely regarded as one of the greatest footballers of all time. Bayern have been showing their support and paying tribute in their training session. There were black armbands in Tuesday's session as well and we'll no doubt see many more tributes for the legend on Friday in their game ahead uh, of Bayern against Hoffenheim. We did want to get word though from Ian Dark and Stuart Robson on the passing of Franz Beckenbauer. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that Franz Beckenbauer would be in anybody's top 10 of the world's greatest players. When you think about that list, Stuart, it is Pele and Maradona and yep. Cruyff and Zidane and Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo and so on, all of them forwards. Beckenbauer? Yeah, well, he started off as a midfield player. Yeah. In the 1966 World Cup, he was a dynamic midfield player that scored goals, ran forward, and he did the same in the 1970 World Cup. I think he got greatness when he became the Kaiser, the, the, the sweeper, and yeah. he made that position his own. He played it like nobody else. He, he was an inspiration for anybody that played at the back to come out with the ball. And all the things you see people doing now, you know, playing out from the back, he was the first man that really mastered it. And even today, with people who never saw him play and just know the name, if, if you're in a kickabout game yeah. and somebody's lording it a little bit back, back in, the, in the back four, they say, who do you think you are? Franz Beckenbauer. Exactly. So. And what he, but what he was good at doing was not just playing at the back and being 10 yards deeper than the, the rest of the defenders. He had the ability to step forward into midfield yeah. and then drive forward with the ball and he'd play balls with the outside of his foot, which you don't see too often these days. He could play 50, 60 yards with the outside of his right boot. He joined in the midfield at the right time. He, he was the king of that, wasn't he? He was the king. And he, he led from the front. He was the captain as well. Uh, he always looked calm and composed on the ball. He always looked calm and composed defensively. And remember, he had other jobs when he was a, a young player. One of, them, one of them was to mark Bobby Charlton in the 1966 World Cup final. Well, that's funny because Bobby Charlton and him kind of moved in the same orbit, didn't they? I mean, yeah. Bobby was told by Alf Ramsey before that game, stick with Beckenbauer. Yeah. He was that good. And Beckenbauer was told, stick with Bobby Charlton. So the two of them hardly kicked the ball in yeah. that 66 final. And there was a bit of a myth about the 1970 uh, semi-final, uh, the quarter-final when West Germany beat England. Yeah. England were 2-0 up and Bobby Charlton... Oh, don't mention this game to me. And Please. Franz Beckenbauer had hadn't really been too much involved, but he came forward and scored the goal to make it 2-1. Well, and that's when they took Bobby Charlton off. Most, most people to rest took, him, they yeah. thought, for the semi, yeah. which England never played in, of course. But that showed his quality. Again, he, he stepped out from the back, hit one from 35. Yes, the goalkeeper should have saved it at the time, but uh, he, was a, he was a master of getting his team back into it. Yeah, I mean, he won three European Cups in a row yeah. with Bayern Munich, twice the Ballon d'Or winner. I mean, and just incredible career, then coached. Germany to West Germany as it was, yeah. of course, in his era uh, to the 1990 World Cup. Whenever I think of him, the words that spring to mind are, are elegance, style, yeah. grace, class. And what people don't realise, he was quick as well. If you watch him in the 1966 World Cup and the 1970 World Cup, he was dynamic. He ran past people. He still had that quality when he played at the back, but he didn't have to use it quite as much because he read the game brilliantly. And that's when he was so dominant on the ball. And he could, I don't think you ever saw him make a mistake, you know, a bit like Bobby Moore. You never saw him actually lose possession and give a goal away. He made the right decisions time and time again. Of course, in any talk about him, we have to kind of mention there was that whiff of scandal over how Germany, with him leading the way, yeah. got the 2006 World Cup. But I mean, I think that's been forgotten, isn't it, in Germany? He is... He has Messiah status and always will have. Well, winning the World Cup as a, yeah. as a coach. And remember, he didn't do any coaching before he became the manager of West Germany in the 1986. He took them to the final in 1986, and then won it in 1990. And they were an excellent team in 1990. They were the best team in, in the World Cup. And that was partly due to him. But he also got the right players involved uh, and he managed them brilliantly. He seemed to float across the turf. It all looked effortless. You could imagine him playing a game and hardly raising sweat. He made it look like that, almost like Federer playing tennis. Well, I played under a, at a England youth level. There was John Cartwright. And he showed me video after video because he wanted me to play as the sweeper. And he showed me video after video of, of Franz Beckenbauer. And he called, talked about him being a Rolls Royce. And he, says, he, he came out like a Rolls Royce. He never, he never had to splatter past anybody. He just came out brilliantly with ease and made it look so easy. And he was a, a top-class player, he was a top-class defender, top-class player and a top-class character. Yeah, what a brilliant, brilliant footballer. They called him De Kaiser, translates as the emperor. I think that's what he was, an emperor of football.
Thank you, guys. The World Papers have been paying their tribute as well to De Kaiser, Mundo Deportivo, L'Equipe, and across Europe, all paying their tribute to a man who helped sh uh, shape German football like no other. Let's welcome back Frank LeBuff to talk more about this, especially speaking to a defender here, Frank, in that this is a player who, as the guys were saying, reimagined the role of a defender. Definitely. He, he changed everything, and I was... Happy to, uh, to be only six years old when I discovered the first World Cup and I saw him playing. And uh, I, was, I was slapped in the face, you know, by his class, by his talent, by his capacity of reading the game before everybody. And, uh, and uh, I understood exactly what his role was and, uh, and what I wanted to be. I, I became a defender after, but like he became a defender after, but... Uh, um, I did all my career as a sweeper, and, uh, and you couldn't be more perfect than, than he was in that situation. Defensively, he was very good. He was fast, as Ian said, or, or, or Robo said, and uh, he was anticipating everything, and technically, he was so good. With the outside of the foot, that was magical, that was so classy. I mean, I, I met him once, and even after his career, it was still very classy. And you know that... There is only three players who became coaches and won the World Cup in both uh, in both situation. It was Zagallo, who, is, who passed away last week, uh, Franz Beckenbauer, and DJ Deschamps. So uh, I wish long life, long life to uh, to to DJ. But uh, Franz Beckenbauer was my not my idol. He was my example. He was my model. How to become a very good sweeper? Because he wasn't from the past. It was from every time, like a, a beautiful song that you want to listen because it goes through the ages. And that's what uh, Franz Beckenbauer's football was. Thanks so much for those words, Frank. And we'll no doubt be seeing plenty of tributes across the Bundesliga this weekend as it does return to action, starting with Bayern Munich against Hoffenheim to Eastern, also on ESPN2, and all action coming back across the Bundesliga this weekend after that winter break.